God, do you love this? This was so good. This is from the birthday show, I think? Yes, it is. Yeah, wow. David Bowie was actually there. Today would have been his 70th birthday. Wow. wow. You know, he smoked like a fiend. I don't know if he quit later on in life. I guess he did, but it was too late, I guess. I guess the smoking did him in. Oh, I love this song. I played this song because I had to go pish. How would I want you? My father used to always lecture me before we'd go into the city. I want you to pish now because I don't want to hear you crying in the car that you have to pish. I'm not stopping on this. On the, on, on, I'm not stopping. They would say pish? Pish. <laughs> Listen, you have to pish out right now, because we're going in the city, and we don't want you crying in the car. I evidently cried a lot. <laughs> well, you were a child. Hey, I wanted to tell you that. A child, I think I was 16. <laughs> Your dad was still telling you at 16 to go to the bathroom yeah. before you get in the car? Oh, yeah. In between uh, checking me for a hernia and my mom <laughs> taking my anal temperature, yeah. Hey, Wolfie, how you been, dude? Great. How are you, Howard? Really Wolfie, everybody. I saw Wolfie at the Christmas party. Hey, it was good him. seeing you. Yeah, it was good seeing you. I actually had a little conversation with Wolfie. What did we talk about? I don't even remember. Uh, we were talking about uh, Steve from Florida. Oh, yeah, Bobo. I mean, Steve from Florida. <laughs> right. <laughs> Formerly known as. Yeah. Anyway, Wolfie's calling in because he went to something called Free Your Mind Conference. Actually, he went before the election even. I remember that, but I haven't been able to get to this piece of business. He goes to all these conferences and stuff. Yes. And... Um, he went to something called Free Your Mind Conference, which we thought was kind of interesting. And it's in Philadelphia where he lives. So uh -huh. he went and over there. And what is that all about? It's like, um, it's all people who get together who believe in, like, the Illuminati, mind control. You know, people today, I guess, again, they want to be special. So they believe in conspiracy theories and all that kind of stuff. We're, we're living with a very sensitive generation. It's a lot of people, too, who don't have any facts. But they, but they, they assume things. Yeah. They'll make up something in their mind, and then it becomes real. Right, Wolfie? These guys make uh, Jesse Ventura seem reasonable. That's that's how far <laughs> out they are. They were alien believers, nine eleven deniers, ex Satanists, um, and just general conspiracy theorists. And then there were like presentations set up at the convention on how television uses mind control. And, and and how they use it during news and sports, and how porn producers cast spells during the editing process to compel demons into the videos. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was that? What, did you go to that one? Yeah, yeah I, I sat in for for a bunch of them, and and I, I think what it is, the, the speakers, this gives them some level of fame, so they just try to come up with the, the craziest ideas they can, and then the people buy into it. Yeah, I guess if you like, we could come up with a conspiracy theory and then teach people a class. People would in. buy in. Yeah. Well, the, the only experts would be me and you because we came up with it. That's right. You have right. to come to us. So anyway, Wolfie talked to some people. They're pretty interesting. This guy says his parents were satanic Illuminati rapists. Oh. Yeah. There's a combination. I'm, I bet, I bet they, they're glad they had kids. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your parents. Both my parents were generational Satanists in the Illuminati. What was it like growing up in the Illuminati? Mind control through torture, raping, drugging, satanic rituals. Human Gee, my dad just called me a moron, that's and all. you're all upset. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, what, what do I have to be upset about? At least they weren't satanic uh, Illuminati parents. Human sacrifice. You actually Human sacrifice? Well, what are you doing here? We got to witness people getting murdered. Oh, absolutely. Now, were you actually raped by Satanists and the Illuminati? God, yes. You grow up in an Illuminati family. You're, you're sexually abused, whether you're a male or female, for the first six years of your life. And the reason for this is you are in a hypnogogic trance for the first six years of your life because you only have two brainwave patterns. Hmm. Oh. The guy sounds like he knows something, too, you know what I mean? He's kind of got a rap going. Yeah, the two brainwave patterns yeah. and hypnogogic uh, word guy, I'm not sure exists. This guy <laughs> wants to speak with you, Howard, and I, I recommend you, you you talk to him because some of the details of the raping and things he wouldn't share with me, but I think he might open up to you. Yeah, do me a favor. Don't mention my name when you go to these places. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want these people thinking about me. It's really weird, too. What's a hypnogogic trance? I mean... Is there such a thing, or is this something he's making up? 
I have no idea. This guy, this guy even like sold things like these these crystals that he made that he put like nuts and screws into. I should have uh, him on, and I should just like outdo everything he says. Like, no, like he goes, yeah, my father raped me. I go, yeah, well, my parents put a goat's head in my lunchbox. <laughs> and like, yeah, well, right? one up him. I could one up him on everything. Uh, hypnagogic, something to do with nighttime visitations. Oh, I think Fred has that. Uh, maybe uh, chalked up to sleep deprivation. Oh, jeez. We could do a whole show just analyzing that one sentence. <laughs> what do you say? That, the hypnagogic what? You're, you know, from zero to six, you're in a hypnagogic uh, trance. But isn't it, I thought it was good to be in the Illuminati, and then you like get all kind of special privileges. Right, you run the world. But he's saying but, but it sucks because you got to get raped for six years of your life. Yeah, and I think if you break out of their control and you have your own thoughts, then that's when you get into trouble. This guy was like the Riley Martin of the Illuminati. He had so much information to share. If there was an Illuminati, I would want to be in it because then everything would be good for but me. But then you'd have to rape your children. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. Well, that's part of the deal. You can't they, let them run amok. They're not going to know what I'm really doing. <laughs> Holy Moses. Yeah. All right. Sounds like a terrible organization. What a great fucking convention. <laughs> Was everyone out of their minds? I mean, the, the Illuminati, compared to some of the stuff these people believe, uh, it was tame. So, some right. of these people are so far out there. Let's find out what other people thought at the big <laughs> Free Your Mind conference. This woman thinks the mass shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School were staged by the government. That's a good oh, one. Oh, I love the staging yeah. by the government stuff. What do you think is the biggest conspiracy in America in the past 20 years? Okay, I'll give you two. The biggest would be 9-11, and the second biggest would be the alleged events of Sandy Hook. What do you mean by that? There's still some hot topic as to whether or not the events of Sandy Hook happened. There's a ton more on the opposing side saying that Sandy Hook was just a psyops uh, in regards to um, gun control. To me, it looked like a planned FEMA exercise. A lot of the same individuals that appeared in news exposés post-Sandy Hook have been found out to be what we would call crisis actors. Hmm. Everybody's got a pretty good rap there, too. I you know? know. They seem reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> they seem it. <laughs> and what is it that the Sandy Hook was a, a training exercise to be a... One of these emergency responders. Yeah, and they're, like and they're they crisis actors. Yeah, you know, they do that all the time. You mm -hmm. know, they'll have drills where some people play victims, other people are first responders. And do you go to, like, Lee Strasberg to learn how to be a <laughs> first responder? Seems that people understand exactly yeah. what to do. Imagine, like, she sounded pretty, like, if you met her at a party, you think she's pretty reasonable. Do they look odd? Uh, I, it, it, half and half. There were some people that looked completely bizarre, but other people did look somewhat normal. Hmm. All right, here's a guy who doesn't have enough information to determine whether the Holocaust happened. He's still on that. He's not <laughs> even sure about right. that? Yeah. Did the Holocaust really happen? Uh, honestly, I don't have enough information to, to make it. He doesn't have enough information. How far away from the Holocaust are we going to go before we get some information? Well, like, you know, in that case, I think the Earth is square because I don't have enough information. No, I've around. never been to the edge. Well, I've, I've walked to the edge, and then guess what? what? It disappears, and then there's a new edge, <laughs> which I don't even fucking understand. A decision about that. Um, certainly, you know, you go looking for the actual figures, less easy to find. So there's certainly some doubt in there. Again, it comes back to, you know, does it really matter right now? No, those aren't the present issues in the world that I want to be focusing on. Ooh, I wonder what he's focusing on. <laughs> How come they have no problem believing in aliens? where they have no facts, but they can't believe in the Holocaust, no, where there are facts. No, that happened right here. Yeah. And you can look it up, and you can go visit sites. There's pictures, too, and you think that would be enough evidence. There's people who actually gave testimony. <laughs> right. But they believe in aliens. <laughs> None of this makes sense. I would go nuts there. Uh, here's a, hey, wait, Wolfie, there's a woman on the phone who says, we're not being fair to the Free Your Mind convention. Oh. Okay. Let me hear this. What do you mean we're not being fair? Howard, I'm not going to go into a long debate with you about this, but I will say I've been to one of these conferences. I'm going to the next one in Philadelphia. It's April 7th, 8th, and 9th. And you're not being fair if you would do your homework. Wait a second. Wolfie went, and my homework is that he's interviewing people. They sound like they're out of their minds. 
Well, the guy doubts really... the Holocaust happened, but he can believe in aliens. Well, I'm not going to vouch for every single person that spoke there. However, there are many good presenters that have a lot of good actually learn something valuable. What would that homework be? You know, why do I have to do homework? <laughs> I, the homework's already been done. There was a Holocaust. I believe it. I believe history. I believe the Earth is round. I don't believe in aliens. You know why? I haven't seen one. When one comes here, then I'll believe in them. I would say... Why is my life so simple? Knowledge. Why do I understand everything? Why would I believe a bunch of kooky theories on the Internet? Because if you take the time to maybe not just dismiss it as a kooky theory, Warren, tell me on your the theory. Internet. What is your theory that you believe in? I, I'm not going to go into what is your belief? theory about what I believe. Let me hear. What do you believe in aliens? I I, I have I don't put enough thought into. It. I think it's possible. Yes. Do I have proof? And have I taken right. the time now, to research that? That's a sensible. That? No, that's a I've sensible taken the answer. Time to research other things. All right. What is well, the most? Well, if you went to this convention, you'd have to believe everything. Everybody's done their homework. What is the most valuable thing you learned at the Free Your Mind convention? I would say that the most valuable thing that I learned is that the media is controlled by certain people that have an agenda. And what? Who are these people? <laughs> You're laughing at yourself. <laughs> Free, free your mind, Howard. Stacy, Stacy, Stacy. The people you're referring to. I'm going to whisper something to you so no one else can hear. <laughs> Would those people be Jews? <laughs> Are they controlling the media? <laughs> Stacy. Thank you. Free your no. mind, Howard. No, free I mean, mind. Well, why oh, these people never have names. Who is controlling the media? If you follow the money. Okay. <laughs> oh, who owns the media? Go ahead. And if you uh, have an open enough mind to entertain the fact that there may be a reason to uh, control You're a kook. people's mind for back, lack of a better term. You're a kook. To have power over so who are the people? Who are these people that own the media? Um, most of them are Zionist Jews. Ah, ah now we're of getting course. somewhere. Of course they are. <laughs> that's why the Jews are doing so great in the world. That's why they're so. That, that's why everyone's so, so loved. So, why are they controlling people to hate them? The mind control is really working. <laughs> all right, thank oh you, uh, Stacy. Like, free your mind. That's free all. Your, yeah, yeah. I'll free I'm my mind. Free my mind. That means just don't even think. Just accept. You want to know? What, you, you know, what, I'm going to free my mind and hope you get locked in a mental institution. Thank you. <laughs> because what quit. is she doing to avoid being controlled? She's listening to us. <laughs> all right, let's get back to it. All right, here's a guy who's a vendor. And since we're in the media, are we part of it? Yeah, of course. Well, you're a Jew. <laughs> uh, this guy is selling healing crystals. <laughs> what are you selling today? Uh, we have. By the way, I think that girl on the phone was Mel Gibson's uh, dream woman. <laughs> he wants to know if she's available for a date. Could that girl have been hot? Were there any hot girls at the Free Your Mind uh, convention, Wolfie? Uh, I don't recall any. All right. Literally not one. N none pop out, cause, and usually that's the sort of thing that would stick with you, but I, I don't remember it. Right. All right, here's the guy selling crystals. What are you selling today? Uh, we have different crystals and sacred stones from around the earth. Is there a certain color crystal that helps with constipation? Mm, black. It activates the root chakra, which mm. is located at your coccyx. That is the chakra that deals... Don't you be laughing over there, Robin. I think you've got a few of these crystals. <laughs> I've been handed a few. Right. ...goes with our feelings of security. When we're insecure, we tend to hold on to what we got, i.e. we constipate it. Mm, yeah, well, just find me a crystal I can rub on my penis to get it bigger. <laughs> this here is the Schlanger crystal. Schlanger crystal? What does that do? It'll make you Schlanger bigger. That kind of sounded like Ben Carson, didn't he? A little bit. Howard, that, that that guy I knew was legit when I found him in the parking lot smoking pot behind a rusty van. <laughs> I knew I knew his stuff was real. 
I went to a party over the holidays and I saw Ben Carson walking in. But I was oh leaving. yeah yeah I, I was going to go over and like see what was happening there. But I hello, like, yeah, Howard. Yeah yeah I didn't know you know I didn't know what was going to happen. Did you see him get crazy like drunk and really loud? That would have been funny. No, I left. <laughs> I I was I was there for ten minutes. I'm not good oh. at parties. I said to my wife, please let me leave. She's like, we just got here. I go, I, I know, but I'm uncomfortable. And so she agreed. I'm I'm a great guy to be married to. <laughs> if you don't like doing anything. I always hear women say they love to just like sit home and watch movies and but that's not really true. Yeah, they like to do that if they've been doing a lot of other things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's like the difference. Hmm. Maybe you should go to the free your mind. Uh, you, you remember? Oh, you, my mind is totally free. Yeah, weren't you taping? I'm free of all thoughts. I remember when you had the little metal balls behind your ears to. to sure, I'll try anything. What was that again? I forget. I forget. It was <laughs> some kind of Chinese thing or something. Yeah, you had a bead behind your ear taped to it. I was like, she's, I think she has a bead taped to her head. Two of them. I'm not, like, yeah. but I'm not stuck. Yeah. They're stuck. <laughs> you know, Robin's so open, she was open to the medicine of the 1700s <laughs> in China. <laughs> All right. You've never had acupuncture? No, never. The guy says Obama is a clone of King Tut. Hmm. This is how weird it gets, and I should keep an open mind. Now, what we you, should believe all this. Right. Stuff. What are your thoughts about President Obama? Obama and family are clones. Now, they are a clone of, of an ancient pharaonic bloodline from wow. Akhenaten or King Tut. Akhenaten. You take Barack Obama. People have a lot of like big words and stuff, though, like to their bullshit. <laughs> kind of like what Riley used to do. Yeah. yeah. Obama and his entire family, and you will find that they are an exact match. Not similar, but an exact match to Akhenaten's family in 2500 B.C. Now, and the reason is Akhenaten is so important is because Freemasons have a temple to... I did see fangs on Obama once when he was smiling. <laughs> Akhenaten in every Grand Lodge Okanaten. in the world, and they are the ones that developed our country. Okeechobee. If they could bring anyone back, it would be Akhenaten. Akhenaten? Why? God, do you think like you're like in a mental institution when you're talking to these people? It, they, they, they actually believe it, so that that's the part that's tough to digest. They they're, they're not shitting you; they really think that this stuff is real. <laughs> Man, it's scary. Like there's so many. And people... what is the purpose? Like uh, everybody in that room should. They probably think everybody else is a kook, but they've got the real thing. Akhenaten. <laughs> I like that he said Akhenaten in in two minutes or whatever. Like, long everybody knows that. Let's see, that clip was 33 seconds, and he might have said Akhenaten. In the first three seconds. Or or seven, I counted seven Akhenatens. <laughs> I think he knows one word, Akhenaten. <laughs> let, me, let me hear that. I'm going to count the amount of Akhenatens. What are your thoughts about President Obama? Obama and family are clones. Now, they are a clone of, of an ancient pharaonic bloodline from Akhenaten or King Tut. You take Barack Obama and his entire family, and you will find that they are an exact match. Not similar, but an exact match to Akhenaten's family in 2500 B.C. Now, the reason Akhenaten is so important is because Freemasons have a temple to Akhenaten in every Grand Lodge in the world. And they are the ones that developed our country. If they could bring anyone back, it would be Akhenaten. That's five mentions in 33 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Akhenaten. Akhenaten. Who's Akhenaten? King Tut? He says it's yeah. King Tut. Yeah. yeah. Who even knows if that's real? Do you know Obama can't see his own reflection in the mirror? <laughs> Did you know that? Wow, these that people, would make him a vampire. No wonder there's so much fucking craziness in our world. Everyone's crazy. That's what you're getting to. This here. guy believes the Bush family are descendants of Dracula. Like... What cult are the Bush family involved in? It's a bloodline, and they're all related to Dracula, <laughs> Vlad the Impaler. And they've got this all over the news uh, to show us that it's the case. And this vampiric bloodline is, is all the elite and all the people that come up through Disney and come up through uh, you know, politics. You'll wow. find they're all related. This is the Disney and politics yeah. all related? Of course. Did you know that Obama's real last name is Frankenstein? You know, we could probably go to this, Robin, and just come up with a line of bullshit like Obama's last name is Frankenstein and probably have a whole following. Well, you know what this reminds me of is religion. Yeah. And if you get a really good bullshit line and stick to it, 
you can have hundreds of thousands of followers. Did you know that Fred is a direct descendant of the creature from the Black Lagoon? <laughs> and imagine we bring him there, Robin. We bring him Swamp to... Swamp We go, look, we want you to look at Swamp Thing. You can call in whatever you want, but... Uh, uh, this this guy going around is Fred Norris. He's not just a copy. He is an exact clone. We have proof that the creature from the Black Lagoon exists. Do you know the W in George W. Bush stands for Wolfman? <laughs> that he's a direct descendant of Lon Chaney? <laughs> Lon Chaney wasn't acting. He no. was really a Wolfman. That was a reality show. <laughs> Do you know that Donald Trump has 46 toes? Did you know that? You don't even know that. He's never taken off his shoes. Have you seen him barefoot? You'll never see it. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Remember, uh, who was uh, Hillary Clinton's vice president? Tim Kaine, right? Yes. He was a hobbit. He actually lived. <laughs> he lived in Middle Earth. Middle Earth. That's what I believe. I believe it. I think he went back there. You don't even see this guy. Yeah, where'd he go? Yeah, what happened to him? Like, I mean, <laughs> so now he's not interested in anything? He went right back to Middle Earth. Yeah. <laughs> he lives in Middle Earth. Prove I'm wrong. <laughs> One more stuff. You like this for your I mind. do, I do. Why am I afraid you're going to go to this? <laughs> Here, a 92-year-old man thinks he's part of an alien race. Ah. Oh. Okay. Sir, how old are you? I'm over 92 years old. Are aliens real? Absolutely. They are helping us release from slavery from the people that we call the elite, the cabal, the Illuminati. The Luciferians. We have 13 families that own the world physically. What is the name of the race of aliens that surround the Earth? The, the Arcturians, the uh, Syrians, the Pleiadians, and I've been identified as a member of the Pleiadian race. The My star family is in the Pleiadian star cluster. Wow. Well, if they're here to free us, they're doing a really poor job. That what was, do you uh, say to that? That guy, by the way, uh, <laughs> this is a strange coincidence, went to high school with Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> but do you ever confront them, uh, Wolfie, and say, well, what the hell is happening? Aren't we ever going to be free? They're out that, there. What are they doing? That's not my job. To yeah, please. <laughs> Poor guy wants to live. I mean, these people are whacked. Matt, you don't think like crazy people live to 92, but Charles Manson, how old is he? 80-something, isn't yeah. he? He's still going. They had him in the hospital. He looked like he you was going to die. You think he just died because he's in jail? Yeah, he's back. Right back in jail. I'm telling you, that guy's going to end up getting out. He's going to serve 17 he's life gonna, sentences. He's going to live out those life sentences? Yeah. But at 92, God bless him. It's great that he's keeping active and has a hobby. Yeah, listen to him. He sounds pretty good. A lot of people who don't have these kind of crazy things going on in their lives, they can hardly get around. Crazy keeps you going. Here's a guy who gets very worked up about vaccines, because there's a lot of that at the yeah, Free Your Mind convention. That was what really fun. pisses you off? When did we become so fucking stupid to think that mercury injected into a baby with aluminum injected into a baby, somehow because a doctor does it in a magic syringe, all of a sudden mercury and aluminum and formaldehyde are now no longer poison. They're medicine. They're good for baby. I mean, this is madness. This is fucking madness. Do you think you could take 30 fucking flu shots in one day and then walk out of that fucking office with all that mercury in you? With all that aluminum in you? With all that formaldehyde in you? Why? <laughs> Fuck you, Big Pharma. Fuck you. Big Pharma? <laughs> Does that mean big pharmacological companies? The pharmaceutical exactly. companies. Pharmaceutical. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know what? God bless the pharmaceutical companies. I, I like that we can get rid of disease. By the way, the world the word uh, aluminum, not too kind to that guy. Aluminum. Uh, aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you. you know, the one thing that seems to go through this whole thing is the Illuminati. Yeah. Why is, what that is that so... I don't even know about that. What um, is it? The 13 families that are supposedly controlling the world. That's been going on for a long time, and it's still here. People mm -hmm. still resonate to that. I wonder why so yeah. many people buy into that. 
that, that was the one thing that they all believe that basically yeah. those those families are mind controlling the rest of us, and that they own and what all are they the controlling us to do? Just to work for everything, them. everything, Robin. <laughs> work for them. Yes, we're working for them. Uh, here's oh, you'll like this. Robin, a lot of attendees have taken ayahuasca. Ah, my friends, my have people. Have you ever tried ayahuasca? I did try ayahuasca. I did this with a 33rd degree Freemason who was a true shaman. The shitting was the thing. And, oh, my God, it was like a fountain coming out of me in my ass. I mean, it was like, oh, my God. I be laughing. They asked me what, what I got out of the experience afterwards. And, like I say, I didn't really get anything but these shits. And I was just, like, erupting like a fountain spray hose. You shit your brains out too, didn't you? Did you shit and throw up at the same time? Yeah, at one point. Like, like you were one in one of those trips. That was in Peru, right? Yeah. And then, like, uh, with a seventeenth degree Mason. And <laughs> I don't the know guy. Think about the Mason. And the guy gave you the uh, the the shaman gave you the ayahuasca, and then how soon afterwards did you start shitting and vomiting? It's about twenty thirty minutes. Wow. And yet you say you loved it. It was an interesting experience. Mm. And you paid for that. You should marry this guy in the clip here. <laughs> was your shit solid or runny? When oh, you... my God. Do you think I was aware? I was hallucinating. Wow. You still... <laughs> and did you shit in a toilet or like a hole? Yes. No. <laughs> and then what, how did you vomit at the same time? Did you have a bucket? Uh, there was a sink right next door, and I also had a bucket. So you sat on the toilet and shit. I, I held my bucket. The buckets were all over. And vomited into the bucket. Yes. And you weren't scared. You were like, hey, this uh, is There's no, nothing to do but go through it. What are you going to be scared of? That you're dying. That so, would that be ridiculous at you. that point. In Peru, the guy poisoned you, and you know what? No I'd already find done you. it once before that happened. Robin, what did that smell like when that was going on? Oh. I have no idea. Again, oh, come on. you're hallucinating. Ask the guy who was in there helping me. The shaman was in there with you? <laughs> Somebody helped me to the bathroom. Does the shaman help you, or is he, like, too important? No, he helps. Oh, he helped you shit. I don't have shit. any of that going on. Like, is he in the room with you the whole time? Yeah. And so when you're shitting, you're shitting in front of the no, shaman? No, no, no. I'm in the bathroom by myself. Oh. And he stands outside the door waiting for you? Someone was standing outside the door waiting for me. I don't know that it was the shaman. And, like, they have regular toilet paper, or is it, like, horrible toilet paper? They had corn husks. Are you serious? No. <laughs> no did they have toilet paper? Yes! And like, when you come out, is the guy like, woo? <laughs> Again, <laughs> I didn't care. You, 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 you're a girl. You care when no, people No, I didn't. Again, Howard, you're hallucinating. Right. You weren't scared at all, huh? You're just trying to get back to some place where you can sit because your eyes are seeing things that aren't in the room. You know, she poisoned her body when she did this. Oh, thing. here we go. Well, it's true. Don't tell me you didn't. No, actually, you get a good cleaning out. That's okay, not that's, a, that's a good cleaning out. Oh, you are a character. Do you make it to the toilet every time, or did you shit your pants? There was no shitting of my pants, and it only happened that once. Well, how come if you're hallucinating, uh, you're able to wipe? Uh, did you get any shit on your fingers? Uh, no. And, like, would you... and I did wash my hands. And did you shit, and then, like, like, watery shit come out, and then, like, you get up, and then all of a sudden you go, wait a second, I better sit back down? No. Oh. It was just one... One big dump. Whoosh. One big whoosh. <laughs> did, did, did the shaman have air freshener, like, after you shit? He <laughs> liked the match. My oh. eyes were closed. Were you nude during this? No. What did you wear? You're wearing just comfortable clothes. Mm. Good for you. Can you believe this? You should be at the uh, Free Your Mind convention. <laughs> Between the, the crystals and the ayahuasca, you'd fit right in. <laughs> Robin be like, I'm learning some things here about alien races. I didn't learn anything about alien races. <laughs> and what did you learn again after all that ayahuasca? You learned that... Uh, again, that your life is given to you. <laughs> not to society, not to your family, not to anyone else. And really, you should be authoring your life, not based on... <laughs> Beliefs and systems that are handed to you when you get here. You told me off the air that you learned that the Jews run the media. I did learn that, that yeah. there's a whole Zionist conspiracy, but so I don't you learn, don't let it. others judge you. In other words, you create your you, own people story. People will judge, but that's not how you should live your life. Create your own story. You are the author of Isn't your life. Isn't that what we learned in Westworld? 
Probably. Yeah, you didn't have to go to Peru. They probably did ayahuasca now to get there. The Robin Dura Duda Ayahuasca. What, uh, what accent is this that? This is Peruvian. <laughs> <laughs> and I am a shaman. And sometimes to the megaphone, I am more shaman. You sound Peru. like a uh, person from India to me. You would think that Peru is very close to India. <laughs> New Delhi, Peru. <laughs> Dude would do the ayahuasca, and you would see that the answers are in your duty. Look, you do LSD. So. Yes, but I was stupid. <laughs> I don't tell people it was good. <laughs> I, oh, all right, fine, whatever. You took an overdose. You are going to take ayahuasca and experience a new reality. And you will learn that you are capable of shitting and puking at the same time, <laughs> which I'm you've sure never done. A lot of people have found that out even by drinking. You, you, are never, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I am going to give you ayahuasca, and after much, much time, you will learn. That you can write your own story. Don't you want to get back to the people who did ayahuasca on the tape? I want to get back to you. <laughs> now that you have learned to write your own story, what is it you are writing? I don't see a story anywhere near you. You've not written one fucking thing since you got back. It's not about writing on a piece of paper, but just living your life at peace. Write your own story. And not story. worrying about what other people think. You don't think I sound Peruvian? No, not at all. I think that I called you the other day when there was something wrong with my computer. That's right. <laughs> I'm also You're that a shaman. Same guy. I'm a shaman and very. Uh, I got a good job at IT company. <laughs> Actually, I am Polish, like Petunia. <laughs> you will take the ayahuasca, but in a half hour, you will realize. That your asshole is the pathway to enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I sound like, I sound like Bikram. Bikram yoga. Yes. Bikram <laughs> sounds very similar to you, too. That is correct. I had yoga with you, and then I got my computer fixed by you. When you... And then you gave me ayahuasca. When you take ayahuasca, you will shit your brains. One <laughs> shit me, one squirt. <laughs> mean yes, two mean no. <laughs> like a magic eight ball. Oh, you're just jealous of all my experiences. You are the most experienced. <laughs> he does not understand that you shit so much the bowl was stained. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to shit so much you can write your own story in your own shit. <laughs> and the more you shit, the lighter you will become. You are going to become... Yeah, I didn't shit enough to find that there was life on Mars. And you're going to become a fire hydrant of shit. <laughs> Repeat after me, Robin. Jews run the media. <laughs> there was nothing like that. Let's get back to the uh, one more people. Yes. This guy thinks George Bush Sr. had sex with corpses, and he thinks Howard Stern is an alien. Okay. What cult are the Bush family involved in? The Bush family, uh, of course, uh, George Bush Sr. was a uh, Skull and Bones member of uh, the Yale fraternity that has gay sex with bodies in coffins. Are there any celebrities that you suspect might be alien? Uh, Howard might be a, an alien, as far as I can tell. He's very lengthy, has the stature of a gray alien. If you look at how the grays mm. look, he would fit the bill. So uh, yeah. just based on his physical characteristics, Howard Stern is a fucking extraterrestrial, as far no. as I'm concerned. So the grays, Howard. The grays. Come on, tell us about it. Well, I used to tell my kids I was an alien <laughs> when they were little. I told them a whole... Boba minds about how I was from uh, Drow Out and the Rets. What do you do if you have a family member who is at this convention? You, you, you do an intervention. <laughs> What's the you intervention? What's the, I don't know. You got to do. You got to try to help him. By the way, Wolfie even caught up with famous actress Sean Young from Blade Runner, and what really? else was she in? She was in a bunch. She of was other... in uh, No Way Out. Yeah, Ace Ventura. She thinks 9/11 was an inside job, and she may have been blacklisted by Hollywood. So she was there. At the free your mind. Wow.
I guess she gets paid, doesn't she? She was one of the uh, keynote speakers, so yeah. I would assume so. Sean Young. Keynote? The keynote. Who do you think was responsible for 9-11? I think it was an inside job. I don't think it was a bunch of Arabs. I think it's suspicious that Jeb Bush's company was involved in the security of the World Trade Center. I think it's odd that there was unreported hurricane activity in the Atlantic Mm. Ocean. What are your thoughts about Randy Quaid? I've definitely experienced a blacklisting of my own career in Hollywood. It Mm. wouldn't surprise me that what he's said is true. There is a certain group of people in Hollywood that can can clip your wings or that can promote you. Were you blacklisted in Hollywood? I believe so, but I have no way of knowing. Mm. That she can't tell. Well, she believes so, but she has no way of knowing. But she has these other theories that she's pretty sure about. I know one thing about Hollywood. If you can make money in the movies, they ain't blacklisting you. Look at fucking Mel Gibson. Look at Casey Affleck. Yeah, no, but I mean, everybody's yeah. carrying on about maybe there's some sexual harassment in his history, but give him a job. He can do it. You know, somebody explain that to Sean Young. I'll tell you what gets you blacklisted in Hollywood. Turning 40. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll get you blacklisted. <laughs> they don't know from that. Yeah, she was actually cast as the original Vicky Vale in um, the Tim Burton Batman. Is that right? But then she broke her arm uh, during the rehearsals and lost the part to Kim Basinger. That must kill her. Yeah, because that was the ticket. That was really good. Yeah. She was pretty popular, though, Sean Young. She was She did some some good movies for a while, and then I remember maybe this is what she considers the blacklisting. People starting to say she was difficult to work with. I just remember her running around on some lot trying to be Batgirl. Yes, yes, she showed up. She tried to get into... Um, Tim Burton's office, she wanted to audition for the part, although they told her they didn't want her. So she thought showing up dressed as, as uh, in that outfit would work. And then she went on a bunch of TV shows in the outfit, was acting really weird. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, I know. I'll find a part I want. I'll just dress up as that person. I'll start being that person. Yeah. But anyway, so hey, it sounds like you had a good time at the Free Your Mind convention. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Nobody freed your mind, though, did they, Wolfie? Well, of course not. Wolfie. That can happen. <laughs> good old Wolfie. Well, Wolfie, good job, man. Hey, thank you. What were you, solo at the... Uh, you, you were there with your wife, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I met your wife. The Christmas hey, Howard, party. Can, can I ask you something about about our interaction at the, at the party? Go ahead. I don't. I probably don't. You, you, you did. You did this thing. Like you, were, I could tell you, you were. You were happy to see me. You said hello, and then you kind of put your arms around, like you were going to hug me. But then, then like there was what? this like weird guy moment when we were both like, I don't know what's happening here. You like tap Wolfie. my arm, and then you. Wolfie, you need away. to free your fucking mind. Are you out of your <laughs> fucking mind? It was weird. Wolfie, I was happy weird. to see you. I hadn't seen you in a long time. You're doing good work, and I, I came over and I said, Hey, Wolfie, how you doing, man? All right, it was just, I wasn't it was, looking to put my arms around you, you fucking I, weirdo. I know. It was uncomfortable. I didn't know what you were doing. You, you kind of made that move, and then you didn't. I didn't what? I don't know. I don't know. Relax. Wolfie is always weird, and he's going to make it about you. Yeah, he, he he was doing so well, and now... Yeah, he <laughs> always wonders what he should do. That's I, what it is. I was trying I, to I, induct Wolfie into the Illuminati, but he, <laughs> he panicked. I, he, I blew it. <laughs> He braced on You thought I was trying to hug you? No, I don't think you were trying to hug me. It was just it was just strange, I don't know. It's hard to resist you, you're so hot. <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't know. I was just fe- being friendly and saying, Hey, what's happening? You know, no, you're a good you're a good dude, man. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're good. I've had know. that same thing with Wolfie over the years where you see him and you you know, you want to greet him like a human being and right. he's like, I don't know if you should do that. Last time I treat him like a human being. Yeah. <laughs> I was, what I was probably doing was signaling to security to get me away from him. He'll say something like, you know, I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah, someone else should be away after that. <laughs> I was like, oh, did we invite Wolfie to this thing? <laughs> you know? Because I didn't, like, you know, you never know with Wolfie. And he doesn't know. Is he part well, of What do you mean by that? He, you don't know. Is he part of our crew or is he just whacked out Is he skull? a whack packer? Right. You don't know. He's sort of in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a blurry line there. <laughs> But it's really weird how you created a whole backstory. I came over, how you doing, man, and how's your life? Merry Christmas, Happy New a, Year. It wasn't a backstory. And your backstory is I was trying to hug you and we had a no, weird No, I didn't. That's not what I said. Yes, what, it is. What did no, you I say said, then? I said you, you tapped my arms. 
You, you're, you're yeah, I gave you a greeting. Well, hey, buddy, what's happening, man? <laughs> All right, fine. Fucking maniac. See, this is what I'm telling you. You're treating him normally, and he's like, wait a minute, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I was searching you for weapons. <laughs> yeah, patting you down. What was that, Robin? Uh, can fell. What are you drinking? Uh, seltzer. She loves that seltzer. I drink Perrier. Okay. Because it's from a natural spring. Supposedly. You think that spring has bubbles on it? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> I buy into it. What, you don't believe him? <laughs> what, you saying that's a conspiracy? <laughs> you should go to the free your mind. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, you drink uh, seltzer, huh? Sure. Why don't that's you drink... all the bubbles I have around here. Yeah, but a Perrier is natural, from a natural spring. Okay. Yeah. You should have seen when I tried to fuck Wolfie at the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It was awesome. Wolfie, tell her the part where I bent you over a desk and then was, like, running my hand up the crack of your ass. <laughs> you had a whole story. Good thing we spoke. I wasn't trying to do anything except say, be friendly. I know. I didn't. I, uh, I should have brought it up. Well, yeah, never yeah, mind. Exactly. <laughs> no. Should have got out while I was ahead. Yep, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Yep. You know what's going through my mind right now? How many people has Wolfie told that story that Howard was like, like... Right, I almost tried to hug him. Yeah. And it was an awkward moment, but we didn't know what to do. Whole thing. I don't, I don't think that I did. I don't think I told anybody. But yeah, I, right. <laughs> Howard tried to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wolfie, you did a good job. Uh, all right, thank you. Good Bye. to see you. Make sure you're not at the next Christmas party. Thank okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, be, I'll be careful to avoid you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fucking guy. I'm having fun with you. Boy, I, try. I mean, this is what I mean. Uh, Shane, you're on the air. Go ahead. How are you doing, Howard? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Where are hey. you How are you doing today? What's happening? Man, I just call. I'm, so I got a kid coming in April. My wife and I, my wife's a nurse, and I'm just this old hippie in Colorado, and I'm 40 years old, and I've been trying to figure out if I need to circumcise my kid or not. You guys have been talking about it a bunch. I've been having conversations with a bunch of people about it. It's a and weird topic. Tell me the right answer. I know the right. I know for a fact the right answer is you should never cut a baby's penis pieces of his skin off. It's rooted in a barbaric ritual. They do that in Africa to 